Alrighty guys, welcome to my Tech It 2 Logistics Pipes tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the basic crafting of the individual pipes and how to make the system actually work. And then I'm also going to go over some of the individual like moving items from point A to point B and some auto crafting as well. So to start off, you're going to need a logistics power junction. And to craft one, it's fairly easy. You need a logistics block flame, block frame with some iron, redstone, and any wooden plank. Then you're also going to need a basic chip. You're going to need a good couple of these. Then you're crafted with any sand and copper, crafted into some basic raw chips. And then you're going to smelt those to get the basic chips. From there, you're going to want to place it on any form of power. I'm using EU from Industrial Craft. And as you can see, it'll give you three different forms of power conversion. It's going to have one Minecraft Jewel, it's five logistics power, ten redstone flux, it's five logistics power, and one EU is two logistics power. As you can see, the logistics power junction is going to act like a battery. It's going to store energy inside of it so that way through times of, you know, lower energy in your system or nighttime if you're using solar panels, it'll store a little bit of energy for you through the night. And then after that, you're going to need a logistics program compiler which is going to be crafted the same way as the logistics power junction but instead of a redstone box it's one lapis lazuli and you can't place it directly on the power junction you have to connect it with a basic power or a basic pipe that is going to act as like the power source for it connecting it with the one basic from here, you're going to have the logistics disk, and then you're going to have the logistics programmer. The logistics disk is going to store all of the information that you learn on all of the logistics pipes. So for instance, if I wanted to learn any of the different fluids, I have to unlock the actual fluid category, which takes exactly 50 seconds. And then it'll come over to this side, where you can learn the individual items in that section. So all of the ones over here are going to be your basic section. And to compile these, or unlock them I should say, it's going to take exactly 10 seconds. And after that 10 seconds is up, you'll have the logistics programmer which both of these, I should say, the logistics disc is crafted with some iron, redstone, and a gold nugget. And then the logistics programmer is iron, gold, FPGA, and an advanced chip, and a blank module. The blank module is just redstone, paper, and gold. The FPGA is just going to be smelted raw FPGA, which is just going to be any sand, gold, redstone, lapis, and a diamond. And then you have the advanced chip, which is just going to be made with two raw basic chips and two diamonds to give you the raw advanced chips. So from there, you'll have your unlocked sections and then you'll have your unlocked area. From there I'll come over to my fully unlocked section. When you have all of the different categories unlocked it removes that section and just puts them all into one long list. So with that you have your programmer and for in this case we're going to be wanting to make the logistics chassis MK1. about five second wait. So then you're going to see that it says pipe program loaded logistics chassis MK1. Now what is that used for? 
So in the crafting of logistics pipes, you're going to have different stages. And then like the chassis pipes are going to have five different stages as well. You're going to start off with your unrouted, which is going to be made with just four iron, two redstone, and two glass. And then you're going to move up to your basic, which is going to be using an unrouted with one FPGA. And then to make your logistics chassis MK1, which is going to be what we'll be using today, it's two FPGA, one basic logistics pipe, a basic chip, and then the logistics programmer with the logistics chassis MK1 program loaded. And then that is how you get the logistics chassis MK1 pipes. Today we'll be using the MK2s to kind of skip over that step. And to show the difference in all the chassis pipes, MK1 is going to have one slot for one module upgrade. Two will have two. Three has three. Four will have four. And then five has eight. It's kind of a big leap from four to five. Five takes a lot of crafting, it's kind of worth it in the end. So from there, you're going to be wanting to move on to your basic automation and moving some items around. In this case, I'm going to be wanting to make me some copper cables. And to do that, I have an energy condenser filling up with sticky resin and one full of copper ingots. And then I have a red matter furnace here, ready to be full of the sticky resin. And the way we do that is we place a chassis pipe here, and then a chassis pipe on top of it. And for this one right here, which will be the one on the chest, you're going to want a quick sort. What does the quick sort module do? The quick sort module, oh well, I should show how it's crafted first, I guess. It's going to be your blank module, an advanced chip, two FPGA, two redstone, two gold, and then the logistics programmer with the module program loaded, quick sort module. So what does the quick sort module do? It's going to see that in this chest there's a bunch of sticky resin, and it's going to look for places in the system if it needs any form of sticky resin. Now I'm wanting the sticky resin to go here to this red matter furnace, so how do we get it there? We're going to take an item sync module, which is going to be crafted with FPGA, two redstone, two iron, and a logistics pipe programmer. And then, oops, let's go back in there. With the item sync module, it's going to give you the exclamation mark on the side. With that, you're going to want to put sticky resin in there. Okay, a little bit of a pause there. Came back. So you have the sticky resin, and you're going to want it as the requested item inside of your item sync module. So then you have your full system set up, but the only thing it's going to need is power. So you connect it with your basic logistics pipes, and then your system will no longer be red, and it's going to pump that sticky resin into your red matter furnace. Now what happens when this guy's full? For this case, it appears it is just continuously piping. But what it's doing is it's detecting that it only needs six to eight of it, and it's only filling up that amount. It's not taking out the full stack every time. Now, for the next step, you're going to want to go from the red matter furnace to the auto workbench. That's a couple steps. Basic, basic, and basic here. You go down here in your bottom chassis. You're going to put a quick sort, because you want it to quickly sort the sticky uh, rubber into the system. 
Can you come over here? I'm going to put in the item scene. And I want it to request the rubber. So now it's going to take the rubber out of here. And it's going to fill up the allotted slots in my auto workbench. Now I also want it to take out the copper here. So I'm going to take the quick sort. And I'm going to quickly sort copper out of that chest as well. Now, I also need to go in here, and uh, this is where item sinks and quick sorts get a little bit difficult. So, if you put the one item sink here, and you put multiple items in the same item sink. For instance, in this scenario, it is always going to request rubber first, and then it will request copper. But that's okay for this system, because it's not going to be crafting all that fast unless we upgrade our system with a flux generator. And the reason I mention this is due to this being a TechIt tutorial. These flux generators are used to speed up any form form of build craft pipes. So with that in mind, this system oops, like this will now speed up tenfold. So now it is zooming way, way faster. Now, we have it this far where it's full of copper cables. Now I want it to transport that somewhere even further. But I'm not sure if I want it just to store there, or if I want it to sit somewhere else. So for instance, in this chassis, I put a quick sort. And you can have either multiple destinations for it to go through, through chassis pipes. And you notice how they have the red squares. That is because of this part of the system doesn't have power, or is a bad part of the system. Once I add power here, all of the red squares go away. So I've got the quick sort in here. And for instance, I want an item sink here. And I want this chest here to take. Oops, let's go out. Need me a couple copper cables. I want this item sink to take in copper cables. So sometimes it takes a second. Sometimes it also requires you to put one in first. There it goes. Took me refreshing the items for it to recognize. And now it will do that automatically. Now occasionally with these systems, it won't immediately recognize. Like for instance, if I go back here and I put an item sink for copper. Occasionally it wouldn't immediately recognize that, or occasionally it won't recognize that I did that at all, and this square will turn red. Now how do you fix that? The real fix for it is break the power junction and replace it. Oh, I've placed program compiled. There we go. And then all of your red squares will go away. Now we have a fully automated system ready to go. And thank you for tuning in to my Logistics Pipes basic tutorial.